what we're going to be doing today is testing out some slugs and our shotguns on our last video the last um video we did on shotguns we talked kind of more of a close range uh use and that's predominantly what a shotgun's used for is, is close range because beyond say you know 30 yards depending on chokes and things like that obviously but beyond 30 yards that shot spreads out so far that it just becomes not really adequate to um take down the target you're you're aiming at so we are going to extend that range out a little bit by using a slug and we're still using smooth bore uh uh, shotgun barrels. We haven't, we're not doing any rifled barrels. I, I just, I honestly don't see a purpose for putting a rifled barrel on a shotgun. Just use a rifle if that's what you're doing. That's my opinion. What are your thoughts? Well, when you said slug, I was under the impression we were eating. <laughs> there would be horse dovers and refreshment. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you came and for. You're speaking of these weapons. <laughs> so, you've been bamboozled. Once again. All right, so we're gauging target at 50 yards, right? really felt like I held it the same both times. Okay. We'll see. So that's one one big advantage to shooting slugs is when you're when you're training on paper you can see where they're at without a spotting scope. Yeah. <laughs> so with a smooth bore, no riflings yeah. in the barrel at fifty yards with a rest. We're getting, that's a probably two and a half inch group on this one. Yeah. Maybe six or so on this one. Yeah. But, you know, with another round of this, we'd probably even be able to get a shrink a little bit more. That's just the first dry run. Dead's dead. Um, and I think that's pretty decent accuracy. I, honestly, with a rifled shotgun barrel, I don't know if we'd improve upon that very much at 50 yards. Stretching it out further to 100, maybe. But I've never shot through a rifled shotgun. Me either. I just never saw the point. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. There we go. Now, one thing to be noted is I shooting on a rest like that is, is a big advantage. Shooting offhand with slugs, for, for me personally, the recoil um, causes me to drop the muzzle. I have that, that flinch, so I drop the muzzle down, and I do tend to shoot low with slugs. But that's just something with training I could probably overcome. Same thing, 50 yards, but going offhand this time. up on the action nice then we're coming over here send it when ready i made an adjustment on that second shot i knew that i was shooting a little bit low um but i didn't compensate th for that on the first shot the second one i was i was aware of it and raised it up a little bit and so we'll see what result that had regardless the results yeah dead. are dead <laughs> dead or severely yeah unhappy it's it's unhappy unhappiness on both on both fronts so my first shot you're looking at right there uh, like i said was i knew it was low so i compensated and raised that bead up above just above the circle and you see that and alan was shooting basically almost essentially exactly the same as before a little left little right and low so with training with practice we could we can make up that difference and get our shots a little bit more on point yeah, you know, I haven't shot slugs in literally, I bet you, 10 years at a range or any other kind of thing. I killed a deer a few weeks back. You should watch the video on me processing that one if you haven't seen it already. Um, and I used this very gun with a slug, about 30-yard shot, um, and dropped it quick. It ran maybe 20 yards, something like that, and had no, uh, no issues. Well, depending on what slug you use, you're talking about an ounce to an ounce and a quarter even an ounce and a half of lead boom that's a lot of energy hitting the thing you know yeah yeah it's, Get your sharpie on mark these. yeah it's essentially a three-quarter inch hole that we're plugging in the in our target so we've backed it up a little bit we're at 100 yards now um roughly pretty close right at 100 yards shooting at the same targets and we're just gonna see what kind of accuracy we can get
putting the bead right on the head. I probably should have aimed a wee high. I just held center best I could. This is interesting. Is that? He has two holes. It's like yep. a slug. Yep. So I didn't hit him in the winky. Nope. So we got one low gut shot still. See, at first Pelvis. when I saw that, I thought <laughs> that shot had to go to the bollocks. Yeah. Negatory. It was keyholing that shot. But still the consistency there. I felt like I held here. But, I mean, as good as I can see with uh, bogged up spectacles. Yeah. The weather's really cooperating today. And the fact that my eyes are just shite nowadays. Yeah. But not, no excuses. It is what it is. You hit where you hit. I probably should have held more here. Oh, well, that's that's exactly what that's I did. My take away from it. Yeah, so I I held, I put my bead, basically, so the bead was filling up this entire head. It was that yeah. big. It covered the entire head, and you'll see that is actually a better group than I did at 50 yards, which is which is weird. So yeah, I would have thought it would have spread out much more, but just you know, luck of the draw, I guess. What do you say we go back to 100 and we try we just fire snap shoot offhand just for just fun. standing up off him like, just to see like you got to take the shot right now yeah what actually is that gonna be like let's do it that was a miss 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 yeah i'm, I'm kind of weaving all over the place yeah i don't feel good about either of those but it's worth a try yeah we'll find out right but it goes back to you know personally i haven't trained much Right. In the past couple years, and I need to do more of that. If a shotgun is going to be something I'm going to be using. Right. But normally I'm using spread shot on critters at close distance. Yeah, exactly. I was trying to not anticipate it. Right. Doing my best. I was aiming a little, probably too high because I was aiming like right here, thinking I'd drop somewhere in here. Yeah. Uh, and that one, I said, it's a miss. See the hole? Yeah. <laughs> I could tell I pulled that one. Yeah. So, let's, take, you know. let's take a look at the back side of that four by four. Let's <laughs> see what that looks like. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, that's what that's what the back of your skull would look like. Yeah, yeah. but worse. Right. So, and that was that was me honestly i i didn't uh i didn't have a good hold or a good pull on that one and it you know is what it is yeah, yeah. so my th this i'm pretty positive was my first shot i was aiming right here i had the bead right here on the head okay. and that's exactly where i hit and my second one i did not feel good about is there was that is that your, yeah yep. it's not marked so that's from yeah yeah well, i dropped the muzzle like i always do when I anticipate the shot and that that's what happens. So you know a drill we could do and if we feel like we're doing that is have your buddy hand you a shotgun and you don't know if it's loaded or not and do the trigger press. And that yeah. way you'll see you'll, you'll see, see the flinch. Yeah. Like, ah, you know? That's one yeah. way to kind of smack yourself I, on the wrist. I, like, I know. know I know for a fact I would do that. I would do it right now every time. That, though, <laughs> 100 yards away. Yeah. This target we're holding here and it looks like you were holding there too. Yeah. That's not bad. No. I mean, well, either way, this is a bad this is a bad day for an yeah. individual. Yeah. So what do you think the verdict is as far as accuracy goes with a smooth bore slug? Well, I mean, out to 100 yards, you know, there's some defensive application there. I've seen guys ring still at two and 300 yards. Yeah. But, you know, practice, you're not going to pull it out of the closet, blow the dust off, and go do that. Yeah. It, it's something you got to figure your holdovers and all. Yeah, I think the two of us, with some training, with some practice, yeah, I need to practice. Could, could stretch it out even further you and know, be able to hit targets at 200 yards. But, but where we live, you know, hunting deer, most likely what I would do with the shotgun would be maybe I need some deer meat. Yeah. And I'm not a big hunter. I hadn't hunted in a long time. Yeah. But... Well, that's That'd be probably how I would employ a slug, honestly. Yeah. And most of those kills in these woods happen 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards. Yeah. So well within the range of that. The point is we get we reach a point where spread shot becomes ineffective. 
you know, and then my uh, cylinder bore, that's like 25 yards, mm -hmm. 30 yards. After that, it's just too loose. So we do have to explore what a slug is going to do for us where that stops. When yeah. the spread shot stops, the rest of that is the, the territory of a slug. Yeah. Now, now here's something that might be interesting to do is to see, just to show that comparison, what will our shotgun do with buckshot at 50 yards? Would you even be able to hit a pellet let's, on let's, target? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So I have the uh, Federal Premium Tactical Double Alt 9 shot. Nine pellet. All right. I'll do the same thing with a Fiocchi, just a standard nine pellet buck shot. Okay. Double up buck. And you're running Fiocchi. Okay. Yeah. Just cool. a standard nine pellet buck shot. Nothing, nothing fancy. All right. I got a, oh, oh. I got a malfunction. Can, can he clear, clear it? Clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it. Somebody pop smoke. Break We're contact. Good. Go, go, go. <laughs> so how'd that make you feel? I felt pretty good about it. I think we're going to get at least a pellet on target, but we'll see. I felt very empowered. Yeah. Like when uh, the, the first wisp of smoke entered my nostril, I just felt really, really centered, really grounded. <laughs> Shotguns have that effect, I think, on most people. Okay, hey, I'm seeing some pellets upper thoracic. That's not bad. Hey, that's a, that's a lot of pellets, actually. That's not bad at 50. Yeah, that's a, that's a kill. It's snowing, dude. Yes, it is. This is actual ice crystals it's a good for range me. Day. Oh, actually, so I'm actually impressed. All right, so. So it's a modified choke, right? Uh, yeah. So nine pellets. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, at least eight pellets. Well, maybe, that, maybe nine. That's ragged, yeah. Maybe nine. So all at 50 yards out of a modified choke. And what round was that? Was that a flight control? No, it was just a, a, a federal double alt tactical. Okay. Nine pellets, center mass, all of them out yeah. at 50 yards. That's way better than I thought was So, so that would that would take out, you know, any, any large thing like a deer. Yeah, I, I've, I've been very hesitant to hunt big game with buckshot because I just feel like it wouldn't be as lethal, wouldn't be as effective. But look at that. Yeah, right. A deer's done. Yeah, that's nice. That, he got shot nine times with a nine millimeter. All at once. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That was a pretty quick shot. I had the malfunction, cleared it, pulled it up, pulled the trigger. So we'll see. We got one, two, maybe three, four. That's two, yeah. Yeah. Five, six, seven. That's two. Look at the hole. No, that one is two. Yeah, here? Yep. Yeah, so basically all of the pellets still hit center mass on a quick raise the gun up, pull the trigger kind of shot. Whatever that is, is, is not, not living anymore. So let's see what happens at 100. Let's see what happens at 100. We might, I, I thought we'd get a few pellets on target at 50. I did not expect all. And I thought at 100, zero pellets. We'll see what happens. So we're gonna see what happens. Shall we? I heard steel clean. <laughs> I heard steel ringing. Yeah. That's funny. I could see the wad go almost all the way there. That's pretty cool. Ain't nothing like cornfield kung fu, baby. I got a little. Is this a cornfield? It is. Well, it was. Could be. Could be. It's whatever you plant in it, right? Yeah. I love terrible weather. Everybody hides from it. I dig it. Yeah. The worse, the better. My hands aren't basically numb. Yeah. It got cold. Yeah. Since we uh, started doing this. Yeah, it starts snowing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say no. Unless it went through a slug hole, which yeah. looks like you got one pellet here, and that's the only one I see on yours. But on target, we got a single pellet out of 18 yeah. at 100 yards. So, But cool. that's very surprising at 50 yards. I, yeah. That's a much tighter group than I anticipated. So at 100, we were doing this, and 
with slugs and at a hundred with buckshot, we did nothing. Yeah. So that's really the lesson here, you know, is you need both, I guess. We're gonna do some penetration tests. Mm. Yeah, don't don't get too weird about it. We're talking about slugs still. Too late, you brought it up. <laughs> so I've got some scrap plywood here. This is three quarter inch. Yeah, three quarter inch plywood here. And we're gonna see um, what we can do as far as um, penetration with a slug. How many layers will it penetrate through? We're about to find out. So we've backed out to uh, 25 yards and got a slug loaded up in my Mossberg here. And I'm gonna see if I can penetrate through four layers of, um, of three quarter inch plywood. Now I've always kind of heard, been taught that you know, a 12 gauge slug will go through three houses, you know, and just keep on moving. And I just don't know if that's actually true or not because I've never actually tested it. So we're gonna see. Um, I know, for example, the construction of my house for, on the basement, the front the exposed wall, for example, has a one inch board on top of three quarter inch plywood, some insulation, another piece of three quarter inch plywood plus a drywall. And if it'll go through this, it'll go through my house. And that's just see something that's interesting to know. <laughs> I think you killed them all. <laughs> like dominoes. Yeah, uh, we did it. Yeah, so right so, there is the back side. So there's that. <laughs> Put your uh, hand down there for a visual reference. That's a, that's a sizable hole. Yeah, it's uh, about a three inch, three inch wide hole there, at least. Um, let's see what we got on the front side. So perfect, clean, three-quarter inch hole right there, basically, on the front side. And the entry, nice. entry wound. Starts to, starts to expand a bit. Mm. Third, a little more. Got a little more distortion happening. Very nice. More. Mm. And then there's that. Um, so, what do you think? What do you think double alt would do? against that same medium i bet double auto will go into the second piece but it won't go into the third piece of plywood that's let's, my guess let's do it yeah. scientific penetration test round two if we have some holes one two three four five six seven eight nine so as nine, advertised nine. yep nine pellets but wait there's more if you call now our operators are standing by we will send you not one, but two rounds of buckshot and a free toaster. <laughs> so look at this. So we've got a pellet lodged in. Pellet lodged in. Here's one on the ground. Mm-hmm. So they pretty much ran out of gas. Yeah, so went through one, one three quarter inch piece and of wood basically. It bounced off of the second. Yep. None of them penetrated through, yeah. None of them went through the second piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But your, you know, the comparison is that's a one ounce piece piece of lead. Yeah. Traveling at, well, what is it, 1,600 feet per second, I think those are? Yeah. Well, you you know, you hear people talk about over penetration, yeah. uh, like in a home defense situation. Buckshot is not an over penetrator, in my opinion. Yeah. And also depends on, you know, what your house made of. Yes. Yeah, it's it's all different. Yeah, exactly. Let's see how many layers the slug will go through. Keep going until we find the limit. Find the, find All right, it, yeah. let's do it. And we're sticking with two and uh, three quarter. We're not using a yeah. magnum slug or Just any of that. Kind of a standard. Yeah. A standard slug. Just a two one and ounce three quarter, slug. one ounce, yep. no frills. Ready? I'm ready, Bob. For science and freedom. Science and freedom. Okay. There's a one. Okay. 
One hole. Uh huh. Yes, go on. Two. Mm -hmm. Three. Yes. Four. And mm, five. <laughs> right, so it did penetrate five. Yeah, it went straight through. There's five. your slug laying on the ground. Here's the slug. My goodness. What's left of it? Mostly intact, I would say. I mean, we lost some shrapnel here and there, little bits of the lid, but that's most of the most of the slug. And look at how the wood is just balled up, and the lid is wrapped around it, taking all that material with it. Yeah, that's a lot of a uh, lot of things happening. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. That's what a slug is capable of going through. All right, Alan and I both did a um, kind of closing thought statement a minute ago, but. The audio sounded like we were inside of a barrel, so I've got to redo it after he left. That's okay. Um, so what did we learn? We learned that um, with training, slugs can be fairly accurate out to 100 yards, even in a smooth bore uh, shotgun barrel. Um, I learned that a rear sight is really not that necessary. That front bead and this rail running down the barrel, hopefully we can focus in on that. That single front bead and that rail running down the down the length of the barrel allows you to line up basically use that rail as that rear sight and be fairly accurate um what else did we learn uh i was fairly impressed at what out of a modified choke uh buckshot does out at 50 yards we were able to get all pellets on target at 50 yards out of a modified 24 inch barrel which i thought was pretty impressive and that surprised me um, penetration, like like we suspected shotgun slugs, will penetrate through some stuff. Uh, five layers of three quarter inch plywood and that is no small feat. Pretty impressive. So if you need to get through something, you need to punch a hole through something, a slug is a good, good option. Um, but really other than that, we both agreed that if we still, after the research, the scientific research that we've been doing, if we had to pick one firearm, we were given one choice, this shotgun, something like this shotgun would be the ticket because it's just so dadgum versatile. I mean, you can do everything with it. You can barely kill the chipmunk or you can kill the polar bear um, with the right loads at the right distances and all of that. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up. See you next time.